We've got a Kubota Z726X here. We're gonna do the uh, transaxle oil and the transaxle fluid. As you can see here, this double circle is after initial break-in, uh, which is at 300 hours. This only has about 220 hours on it, but I don't know who had it before me. And they've had it for about five years, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the service here. Feel free to jump ahead if you want to, or you can watch the whole video for a detailed start to finish. These are really the only parts you're gonna need. Um, these filters are pretty expensive. I think they were 60 bucks each, so it was about $120. And then um, Kubota recommended using the Parker HT1000, which if you read online, gets really good reviews, and they had this at the dealer. Uh, I've got seven quarts of it, and this stuff's super pricey. It was like 16 bucks a quart. So this whole package was almost $300, but you're talking about a couple thousand dollar hydraulic pump. Um, so it's important to, to use the right stuff. But uh, I always use OEM parts and OEM fluids when I can. All right, let me explain to you everything I use to do this job. Besides the parts, the oil and the filters, um, you need two empty jugs. These are filled now with the, with the used oil. But you need two empty jugs that'll hold eight quarts of oil. You need a couple of drain pans. I use two shallow drain pans. You need a funnel to uh, put your oil back in. Uh, makes it a lot easier. I use brake clean and just some paper towels to keep everything clean. That oil is really hard to clean off. So brake clean works out pretty good. You want some compressed air, uh, you need some kind of compressor. And then um, I had to use these. <laughs> this was kind of, I got this stuck in the breather port. So I had to use these long um, needle nose to get it out, but you could probably use something else. You don't necessarily need them to do the job. What you do need is an Allen head socket. This is an eight millimeter Allen head socket. I got this set at Harbor Freight and uh, I love it. I use it all the time. So I'll put a link down in the description of that. And then you'll need a universal joint because uh, this area where this goes is real tight. So you want a universal joint and you'll need a couple extensions to actually um, get that out to where you need to go. And then uh, I used a breaker bar. This is probably 20 inch to break loose those breather ports. They're really tight. So you want a breaker bar. You want a torque wrench. Uh, the torque's really low, like 10 foot pounds on everything. So you just want a little torque wrench. Then you'll want uh, just a couple ratchets and then a 15 16 or a 24 millimeter socket to take the filters out. And I had to use a 17 millimeter wrench. I could not fit a socket down in there to get the drain bolts out. So I used a 17 millimeter wrench and then I used a half inch drive. This was to take the filters out. And then actually to torque these back down, I had a half inch to three eighths um, converter because uh, I only needed 10 foot pounds of torque and my half inch drive torque wrench will only do 20 or above. So I have this little converter. Um, so that's everything I used to do the job. And uh, I think if you have all that stuff or some form of it, you should be able to do this job, no problem. One other thing I did use, uh, I have this light. It's an LED light, it's flexible and it's got a magnetic base. You can stick it on the tractor or the zero turn uh, and it's awesome. I'll put a link to that too. Um, I've used it a bunch. I used it mainly because I needed the light stuff up to take the video, but it's really helpful when you're trying to see the breather ports and that other stuff. Um, anyway, it's a pretty cool little light and it's uh, USB rechargeable. And I've been using it since Christmas time and I really enjoy it. Uh, it's got a bright front, two levels of front, and then it's got an end light that I use also. Now this goes for any machine you're gonna work on but um, the first thing you wanna do before you do maintenance, in my opinion, is clean the machine. You can see this, this machine is very clean. Cleaning your machine is not difficult. You know, everyone has their own methods, but I just fill up a, a bucket with soap and water. If you don't have soap, just use dish soap. If you don't have like a car cleaning soap. And I have a couple different brushes that I use and some rags and I just spray it down with a hose. I do not pressure wash it. I spray it down with the hose. I brush everything down with, with a couple good brushes and I use uh, just a regular old dish towels that I have in the garage. I wipe everything down, I rinse it all off and then I uh, dry it down really, really well with a couple old towels. And that's it. Uh, I use some Fantastic and some degreaser on the tough spots, but that's it. You know, just get your machine nice and clean before you work on it and um, you'll make sure you don't get any dirt into the oil or into the oil filters or any of that kind of stuff. So it's it's the best thing you can do before you work on your machine. Overall, this assembly is not that complicated. Um, you've got a drain plug at the bottom and then you've got a breather port at the top and you've got this filter towards the back. So I'll show you all those on the uh, 
on the machine, but that's about it. To get the breather port out, you're gonna need some Allen heads um, and you're really gonna need to be on a socket like this. You're gonna struggle if you just try to use keys. So I actually had to use a universal also uh, to get it in there, but make sure you have this before you start your project. This is an eight millimeter, but you definitely need these. Uh, So you'll see straight down there is your breather port. And that belt is a little bit in the way, like I said, and this uh, this universal allows you to um, get into there and get onto that bolt. So you're gonna want to make sure you have those tools ready before you do it. And then you're gonna need another long extension. I probably got about 12 inches of extensions to get all the way up here. So I'll go ahead and put that on, and show you what it looks like. All right, so there's a view of the Allen head and the breather port. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make sure that I can loosen this on both the left and the right side has a breather port too, uh, right down in there. And I'm gonna make sure I can loosen both of these before I start the project, because if you can't loosen these breather ports, you can't fill it back up and you're gonna be in big trouble. So just crack these loose and then tighten them back up before you start just to make sure you don't have those stuck. Okay, we've got a pretty good breaker bar here. I think it's a 14 inch, and it'll allow us to break this loose without too much trouble, hopefully. Man. All right, that one's broke loose. Like I said, these are nasty tight. You wanna make sure these uh, come loose before you get into this project. But that one broke loose, I tightened it back up. And now I'm gonna do the other one. Except I got my uh, Allen head stuck down there. Had to bring in the reinforcements. Got the long handle uh, needle nose here. The Allen head is just stuck in that bolt uh, pretty bad. There we go, got her. So now I'm gonna break loose that other side, just make sure they both break loose. Also throw on a pair of gloves. Uh, you're gonna wind up breaking loose one of these bolts and hitting your fingers and you're gonna be mad. I love these gloves. These are tarantulas. Um, they're nitro coated. I'll put a link down in the description to them. I bought them on Amazon, but I, I don't know. They're just awesome. They are my favorite work gloves. I work in them all the time. All right. So we're going to see if we can get down on that other breather port and break that one loose too. Like I said, break these loose before you get started. Make sure you don't have a problem. This one I probably don't need the universal joint on, but I'm gonna use it anyway, because it's already there. And my breaker bar. Man, those are nasty. All right, they're both broke loose, tightened it back up, and uh, lost my Allen head, but it did come out. It's just laying down there, so I'm gonna pick that up, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, check out the, the filters in the back. So you've got your two hydraulic pumps on the right and left. Right here is one filter, and right here's the other filter. And what these look like is this. They look like that, and that's the back end of them. And they're basically sitting in your, uh, in your hydraulic pump. So this is a 24 millimeter bolt. Before you get started, this is the most important probably part of this job. Clean all of the grass around it. Clean all of the dirt. Do not mess around um, with, these, with these parts. This is the most important part of the zero turn, probably besides the engine also. It's, these are $2,000 Parker pumps on each side. You don't wanna screw these up. So I'm gonna get some compressed air in there. I'm gonna clean out all this grass, even the stuff down here. Um, all of this grass is going to get cleaned out and I'll probably take some brake clean and just wipe around the edges. You want this sparkling clean. So I'm going to move the camera back a little and clean this stuff up for you. reservoirs for the hydraulic on each side. I'm going to go ahead and spray real good around these two. 
um, just down in these cracks, they kind of get oil. Don't take the cap off until you've sprayed and cleaned this out. So here we go. Um, called in some reinforcements here for this help. Anyway, the next thing you're gonna need to do um, is get to these hydraulic what? filters. I don't have a metric this size, but it's a uh, 15, 16 seems to fit it nice and tight. And I tried to use, it's a 22 also, or a 24 if you got a 24, but this is too long. This bolt gets in the way. So I needed a short stubby. So this is the only half inch I have, and then you need some kind of long extension so you get in there. And then you just want to crack it loose. You want to make sure this cracks loose before you drain all this fluid out and then you can't get the new filters in. But it shouldn't be a problem. These are not tight. There you go. It's loose. Um, and I'm going to do the other one too just to make sure that these can be loosened. Just like. And then, like I said, you just, you just want to barely crack this loose. There. And then I'm going to tighten it back up. So good, those are gonna come out easily. All right, now this is the last piece of the puzzle. We are underneath the zero turn now. This is the right hand side. This is the drain bolt. Unfortunately, it is not exactly underneath this hole. So you can't fit a socket in here. So the last tool you're gonna need is a wrench. Uh, it's a 17 millimeter. And you're gonna have to get to this from the front like this. And then, uh, you will be able to crack it. What I don't know what I'm gonna do is how I'm gonna torque this back down because uh, my sockets don't fit in here. So I'm just gonna have to use the, the old, I hope I got it tight method. Um, but I don't have any other choice. I ain't taking this frame off to get to that, but that's how you get to this bolt. And I imagine it's gonna be pretty tight, 17 millimeter. So we'll see if we can crack it loose. It's really hard to get the right angle for torque on this. I'm gonna have to go up front. <laughs> Got her. Okay, that's one side. Now I'm ready to actually start draining that oil. So what you want to do is you want to um, loosen the cap on the top uh, where you fill the oil on the right-hand side and then crack the strain bolt. The other thing I recommend is uh, just getting some brake clean, spraying a paper towel, and just wiping this up before you crack this loose. Try to get any debris and crap around. Well, I already cracked this one loose, but um, try to get any debris and crap out of here before you actually take this bolt completely out. So, should be pretty cleaned up. And then you just want to take this out. I'm just going to let it fall into the pan, unless I can maybe grab it. Again, I've cracked the fill on top. And there you go. And then you let it start draining. Do while this is uh, draining is you take this bolt that you got out and you clean it up real good with paper towel some brake clean uh, there's a washer on there just kind of check it make sure everything's looks okay before you put it back together but um, that's gonna take a little while to drain so we'll let that drain this pans pretty full Go ahead and swap it to the next one and let her go again on the top here I've cracked this uh, this fill right here just to give it some air to start breathing you don't want to take that off you don't want anything to fall in there but just let the air come in there 
and drain this thing out. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that to um, drain is just get some brake clean and a uh, paper towel and just clean up all this dirt around here. And, um, you know, you don't want any of that crap to get back in there. So be real careful when you're wiping it. You want to wipe from the inside out. You don't want any of that to fall in. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to clean up this cap real good while I'm waiting. And uh, make sure you don't accidentally spray any of this brake clean down in there. Brake clean is an extreme uh, oil cutter. You don't want that stuff in your oil. It will ruin the oil's uh, performance. But anyway, just get that cleaned up real good. And uh, I'm probably going to just cover this up with my hand so nothing gets in here and spray this out again real good on that. Just... The next thing you're going to clean up, I've already cleaned up the, the bolt and the washer. You're going to get a paper towel and you're going to wipe where that oil is draining out before you put this bolt back in. And then you're going to pop that filter out and wipe that surface really good. You want to wipe everything down before you put new stuff in. You're not barely going to be able to see this, but again, just some uh, brake clean, paper towel. Get under there, wipe up that oil fill area real good where that plug was. You want that surface to be nice and clean before you put the bolt and washer back in. Again, 15 16 or a 22 mil or a 24 millimeter, whichever you got, and a long extension. And this is only on here with a couple foot pounds, maybe 10 foot pounds, so it should not be hard to loosen. Filter's pretty black, but I don't, I don't know. I don't see any chunks of metal, which is good because that would probably completely destroy the transmission. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw that on this towel here and get the new one ready to go on. Get yourself some of your fluid and um, go ahead and open this up, keep it clean. I would recommend laying it right on the plastic and you wanna oil this uh, O-ring real good. And last thing you wanna do before you put it in, you wanna wipe down the surface. I just get it go on really good, that surface. So we're gonna do that right now. Be real careful not to get anything in there. Just wiping down the surface. Keep it nice and clean that and then get this thing oiled up I have taken my gloves off it's really hard to start and stop the camera and work with the gloves on but anytime I'm doing something where I break loose a bolt I'll throw the gloves on you don't want to smash your knuckles but uh, this o-ring you just get your finger get some oil Get that O-ring real good so it glides on there when you put it back in. Like that. Set it back on your plastic, get your fingers cleaned up, and go ahead and put this thing back in. So here we go. Make sure you don't get any dirt, crap. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and use my hand. Cause I do not want to get any dirt in here when I do this. And then it kind of slides on to the uh, fitting in there. And it's kind of a tight fit because of the way it slides on there. So get the ratchet back out. All right. So it's nine point, I think it said 9.6 to 
foot pounds, so I got this set at uh, 120 inch pounds. And uh, we'll just go ahead and get this thing torqued down. Again, I really recommend torquing this correctly. It's a plastic uh, head on that bolt and a filter. I, I don't know, I just wouldn't mess with it. So, there it is. Doesn't take much. And then last, you know, just wipe this thing up, clean it up real good. And uh, make sure, make sure the work you just did is nice and clean. And that's it. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the drain bolt back in. Again, take a paper towel, wipe your surface one more time. Get your bolt and go ahead and get this thing back in there. I'm working blind, so we'll see how it goes. That was ridiculous. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do is just kind of clean up this rail, get all the oil that you that drained out and kind of hit it. And the last thing you should do is torque this. But the problem is I can't. I don't have a socket that will fit in there. So I will use a wrench and get it as close as I can. Last thing you want to do is torque this. Uh, the manual says four to six foot pounds, which is pretty low, but we're gonna get it as close as we can with a wrench because I can't fit a socket on it to torque it. Sorry. We'll just tighten her up. Four to six is not very much, so don't go crazy here. You got a big wrench. Just Snug it up. There we go. Okay, now we do. Now we uh, fill it back up. So the manual says you want to loosen this breather three turns. Watched a couple other videos say guys had to loosen it more than three turns, but we're going to start with three turns. So pick, find a piece of dirt or dust on it and kind of look at it so that you know where it's at. And then go ahead and that's one. That's two, and that's three. Okay, now that that breather port's loose, the next thing you wanna do is start filling this up. So I'm gonna use a funnel. Make sure your funnel is clean. Don't put in a brand new filter and drain all your oil out and then use a dirty funnel to fill your uh, tank. So take this off, put my funnel in, and uh, start putting fluid in this. Now this says it uh, takes seven, seven quarts total on the machine, so I expect it's like three and a half per side. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna probably put three in, see if it gets to the max line. You're supposed to put it in until it comes out the breather port. From what I've heard and seen, it takes a really long time to drain from this expansion tank down into the actual um, hydraulic pump. So don't be alarmed if uh, it takes a while. I, I mean, honestly, I heard like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. There's a really small tube. So just keep an eye on it. Fill this up. And then let it drain down in. Just take a look here in the tank. Yep, it's pretty high up. It's probably all the way up to here on the expansion tank. So I'm just gonna let that kind of drain down into the into this side. And while that's doing that, I'm gonna start on the other side. Basically, this entire process is gonna be exactly the same for the other side. You're going to um, clean everything up, crack your drain bolt, crack your filter out on this side, and clean all the surfaces, put everything back together, and um, do the same thing. So I'm gonna do that while this other thing's going. Just some good old cleaning up. My uh, drain pans are full. I didn't actually have 
my like big normal drain pan doesn't fit underneath this zero turn very well. So I used uh, this little plastic container I've got. This is actually a leftover container from Chipotle catering. So thanks Chipotle. Anyway, get these things emptied out so that I can do the other side. Couple things to note. This is all the oil. This is a one gallon water container. There's four quarts in a gallon, so it's probably up about three and a half. So it's gonna be just about right. And um, the other thing is, check out this oil. It's not, uh, not super bad, but it's pretty milky and gross. So I'm gonna say I'm pretty glad I'm changing this out. You know, it wasn't due until 300 hours. I only have 222, but I think it's gonna really help this machine out. Uh, you know, you get a look at this oil. It's just kind of, kind of milky and gross. And the new stuff is not. The new stuff looks like this. So it's like nice and clear. Looks awesome. It is not that milky, nasty stuff I just took out. So I'm glad we're changing this stuff out. All right, I'm on the left side. Again, socket doesn't fit in there, so I'm using my uh, wrench. This is where you want to wear gloves because it's a weird angle. When this breaks loose, you don't want to hit your knuckles on anything. Get in here from the front and break her loose. Just like that. Again, uh, also, I did have to put my mower deck all the way down to be able to reach that stuff. It just made it a lot easier. But once you got that cracked loose, get your hand in there, get your wrench out of there. And get your drain pans ready. Unscrew this drain bolt. Again, 17 millimeter. And once it's out, let that stuff start draining and then go up and crack the, um, the fill, the transmission fill port. This guy right here. Crack this uh, loose and just let it kind of sit at an angle like this and with that air in there it'll let that drain way faster yeah see how good that's falling out big difference and um, I had to have two pans ready uh, one thing to note on this side there's no washer on this bolt I expect it's stuck on the hole up there. So once this oil is drained, I'll get in there and check. Good news, found the, found the uh, washer. Uh, I will say it wasn't really stuck, it was just kinda stuck up there with the oil. So it could have very easily fallen in this pan. I'm glad it didn't. But if you've lost yours, before you go try to buy a new one, maybe check the bottom of your oil pan. It may be in there. Okay. Just like the other side, you want to get your uh, either a 24 or a um, 15 16 socket ready. Get in here on this filter and break her loose. A little bit of oil in there, but. That's it. And uh, just like the other side, most important thing, get this surface cleaned up. And that's it. Get that thing cleaned up like that. Here I'm just preparing the filter the same as the right hand side. Uh, just taking it out of the packaging and oiling up that O-ring and getting it ready to put back in. Put this back in, 10 foot pounds of torque. You want to get this thing back in here. Try not to touch anything. Sorry about the angle there. If you can't see, you kind of just push it on there and then get your socket in there and start screwing it in. It says tighten by hand and then tighten it to 10 foot pounds with a torque wrench. So I, by hand, this is kind of by hand with the tool. And we'll get it tightened in there. If it's actually tightening, 
There we go. That's basically hand tight. And I get my torque wrench on there. There's your 10. And that's it. Not much. Sorry about that. Filters in, filters done. Give it one more wipe just to clean up anything around it. And now we move on to the drain bolt. Drain bolt hole. This thing's done draining. It's barely tricking at this point. There you go. So uh, I got my washer and my bolt already cleaned up. They're right here. Again, wipe this surface down real good. Brake clean, rag. Pan on your way. Don't want to put that drain bolt back on on a dirty sealing surface, and then it won't seal, and you'll drain your oil or leak oil. So once you got that, get your hands out of your way and try to get this bolt in here. Okay, we are two quarts in. And one thing I wanted to show you to check this level, I, I need to put another cord in still. There's nothing flowing out of the breather port, but to check this level, it's really hard to see. But what I do is take any light, I just happen to have a headlamp with me, and uh, shine it down in here, and you'll easily be able to see the level. So I've seen people do screwdrivers and some other stuff, but just shine a light down in there and it will totally light up what you're trying to see. But I know I need at least one more quart in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the third quart in, let it drain down into there. And then I'm gonna start watching that breather port a little more closely and see if anything's coming out. Look at that crystal clear oil. Doesn't look like $17 of oil every time I pour one of these in, but it sure looks like it when they charged my card. Anyway, again, keep everything clean. Try not to spill any of this oil, it's expensive. I'll get this cord into the reservoir and just let it drain down into that pump real slowly. And then after this one, I'm gonna start watching that breather port pretty close and put in maybe another uh, quarter quart or something. But in the meantime, I'm gonna continue on the other side, like I said. All right, again, we're just gonna dump out some of this old oil. Uh, when I get it into a, when I get into that fresh container, you get to see it, but this stuff is also pretty milky from the other side. So I would say, like I said, both of these needed done pretty bad, even though they weren't at 300 hours. I am very glad I'm doing this. All right, I have uh, three full quarts in already, and now it's time to start kind of checking out the breather. Hey, while I was working on that other side, uh, I noticed this oil is starting to come out of here. So that's awesome. That means she's full. We're gonna get that tightened back up. Tighten this down from 8.3 to 9.9 .9 foot pounds of torque. So I got it set on 10 from before. I'm just gonna click it back a notch or two and we'll go ahead and uh, torque this breather port down. go okay the breather ports tightened back up you want to wipe that down real good clean that up um, after that the next thing you want to do is you're trying to get this to um, the max min and max line which I'm looking at it it is basically already at the uh, at the line so it's just a little above it you can see it right here so I'm not gonna take any out when I do the the uh, breathing operation I think uh, it will probably use up a little bit of this or when I do the bleeding operation. So I'm not going to take any out or anything. It's just a teeny bit over the line. So I think we're good on this one. So I'm going to put the cap on and uh, finish up the other side. The last thing we're going to do is purge this transmission. And uh, it says the following procedure is best done with the drive wheels off the ground um, and then repeat under normal conditions. 
but if you can't, you can just do it in an open area. So I'm gonna jack up the vehicle. So I used a block to just lift this up from the back, but do not do this procedure with this jacked up like that. If it falls off, you're done. So I am gonna lower it down onto these two jack stands uh, to make it a little safer. And then once it's onto those, I will know that it will not fall. So there you go. So there's no weight on this jack at all. It's sitting on those jack stands. Don't do this on a jack or it's gonna be very dangerous. I apologize for the background noise. We got a nasty thunderstorm that came through, but uh, the next thing you're gonna need to do is get to that bypass lever right there. There's one on each side. You can see the one over there. See the one over here. This bypass lever is right here. And you're gonna rotate those to the right um, like this. They're easy to move. Rotate them both to the right. I'm gonna go over to the other side and that will make it so the hydraulic is bypassed. Uh, you wanna do that before you start this procedure. Again, here's the other side. Just move this over to the right like that. And now they're ready for doing your purging procedure. The general procedure is this. Start the engine, take off the brake, move the control levers uh, to 30, sorry, set the engine to low idle. Move the control levers forward 30 seconds, rearward 30 seconds, and then neutral lock. Close those valves and do it again um, with high idle. So set it to high idle, disengage parking brake, move the control levers forward 30 seconds, rearward 30 seconds, the bend back to neutral, and then check your oil. All right, here we go. Start it up. Low idle, parking brake off, 30 seconds forward, 30 seconds backwards. Okay, now you gotta reset those bypass levers to the left on both sides. So that one's set. That one's set, and then high idle, same thing, 30 forward, 30 backwards. Now I'm going to check my fluid levels and it says if your fluid level is uh, below the min line then you got to go back and do the breather port fill it up etc if it's a, if it's not below the min line you're good uh, you can fill it up to the max line and you're fine but if it's below you could have sucked a little bit of air in and so they tell you to go ahead and start over with the breather port operation so here's my right side it's just a little bit above that max line and uh, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and leave that alone. Um, I'm gonna use it a little bit here in the spring after one or two mows, I'll check it, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I'm also gonna put it back on the ground flat. Right now it's still jacked up and just check it. And here's the left side, uh, almost right on the max line. Looks good, I'm not gonna mess with it. Again, I'm gonna put it back on the ground and uh, just make sure these levels look good. I'm gonna take it back off these jack stands. Otherwise, I think I'm done. Thanks again for watching. It took me quite a bit of time to record and edit all that video, so if you liked the video, I'd love if you'd hit the like button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want uh, more videos like this. And if you hit the bell, it will give you a notification anytime I upload a video. I try to do DIY and maintenance videos this style. And uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see. And if I'm doing a video or if I'm uh, doing that project, I will take a video on it and try to upload it. Thanks again.